Hey, my name is Rachel, glad you could make it. I am headed into week three of the 28 day fiber fueled plan in the book Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will B, because I can't pronounce his last name. Seemed like a little less meal prep this week. Um, again, we're repeating some recipes, but there's a lot of new ones. This week does have some more grains. There's like more garlic and onions. So I particularly, I don't notice an issue with garlic and onions. That's like a FODMAP thing. I don't seem to have issues with those foods. I eat those very regularly. I am having farro this this week. It's a, a grain. It looks like rice. I don't know if I've ever had it before. It's not like a gluten-free grain, so a little nervous to have. Groceries weren't as intense this week. There are quite a few things I had that I'd already purchased for the previous weeks that I'm carrying into this, so that's nice. Some more fermented foods this week, like there's olives, there's capers, there's kimchi. As always, I will be showing all my meals that I'm having. All the recipes come from the Fiber Fueled book, and my snacks will mainly be fruit, maybe some nuts and seeds here and there, but I won't film that, just the meals, and I will be reviewing all of them for you. So. Without further ado, here is everything I ate this week. Breakfast is puttanesca tofu scramble with a little bit of sourdough toast. There's like olives and tomatoes, capers. Not bad, definitely a lot more flavor than the tofu scramble last week. Again, tofu scramble really isn't my favorite. I'd say it's a seven out of 10, like objectively for a tofu scramble, it's pretty decent. For lunch, we have colorful collard wraps. So inside the collard greens, there's some tofu, there's pumpkin hummus, bell pepper, cabbage, cucumber, carrots, avocado, and hemp seeds. That is the inside, let's try it. I feel like I'm mostly tasting the hummus. I feel like I'd rather just have this all as a salad than a wrap, it's kind of tricky, but six, six and a half out of 10. It's salad inside of lettuce, like I don't know what to say. Dinner is lentil bolognese with spaghetti squash as well as some pepita parmesan on top. Kind of labor intensive recipe um, just because you have to deal with the squash and all that, but let's try it. I feel like I would like this recipe better if it was with like lentil noodles or rice noodles just because the spaghetti squash texture isn't really my thing, but I made a ton. This is like half of what it made. I'd give this a 7 out of 10. Breakfast is the superfood smoothie bowl. So I customized it a little bit. I used just like some frozen berry mix in it. I used a whole frozen banana instead of half. I can handle fruit. For my toppings, um, I did some flaxseed and coconut and strawberries. And then the peanut butter is part of the recipe. 8 out of 10. Lunch is some leftovers. It's the no tuna sunflower salad. I have it on some toasted sourdough with some salad greens. I'll give it like a seven and a half out of 10. The mix is a couple days old. It's not as flavorful. It's still good. Dinner is Thai rainbow bowls with peanut tofu. Crispy air fried tofu and this peanut sauce that's like peanut butter, tamari, lime juice, some maple syrup. And then the veggies, we got cabbage, cucumber, bell pepper, carrots, and scallions and then some brown rice. Solid eight out of 10. The sauce is definitely like, I'll just keep this sauce around forever for dressing. Breakfast, once again, is the simple overnight oats. Today I put banana on it, some strawberries, and a coconut flake. Put a little too much milk in when I made it, so it's a little more like a cereal. Seven out of 10, pretty good. This is the sesame noodle meal prep bowl. This is four servings of it, just so for context, we just have it all in one container, but there are buckwheat noodles and edamame. I have some rainbow carrots, cucumber, hemp seeds, and then this uh, sesame tahini dressing, as well as some crispy tofu. This is pretty good. It's meant to be eaten cold. Um, I'll give this seven and a half out of 10. Dinner is buffalo chickpea salad. So there's some chickpeas tossed in hot sauce and some other spices. I use the Siete traditional hot sauce as well as some avocado, romaine, and tomatoes. The dressing has that leftover pumpkin hummus as well as some red wine vinegar. It's all right. It's a flavorful salad. Seven out of 10. Breakfast is the chocolate peanut butter super smoothie. There's peanut butter, frozen bananas, cocoa powder, hemp seeds, and a date, and some almond milk. It's good. It tastes like a chocolate peanut butter smoothie. Nothing that I haven't had before. Eight out of 10. Lunch is Mediterranean grain salad. So this has farro and chickpeas and veggies like bell peppers and cucumber and then a lemon dressing. This is multiple servings just for context. It's really good. It's refreshing. I'll give this a seven and a half out of 10. Pretty solid. 
Dinner is gumbo with brown rice. So in the gumbo, there's like kidney beans, fire roasted tomato, a bunch of herbs, some broth, peppers, onions. Don't know if I've ever had gumbo before. There's also okra in here. Pretty good, I don't know. It just seems kind of like a vegetable soup sort of thing. Seven out of 10, pretty good. Breakfast is simple overnight oats. Once again, put bananas in here, strawberries, and some hemp seeds. Eight out of 10, big fan. Lunch is another repeat. This is the sesame noodle meal prep bowl. So just leftovers. I still have so much more of this left. This recipe made a ton. Still good, seven out of 10. Buffalo chickpea salad, again. This day is all just a repeat of another day. Seven out of 10. This is the very good sweet potato toast. Once again, I didn't have any blueberries, so I used banana. And there's some coconut flakes and almond butter. That's really good with banana. Eight out of 10. Lunch is more of that Mediterranean grain salad from the other day, seven out of 10. Dinner is kimchi fried rice. So there's a whole tub of kimchi in here. I use this kind and uh, brown rice. There's scrambled tofu, scallions, ginger, bok choy, mushrooms. This is so flavorful and delicious. It's pretty spicy because kimchi is spicy and I'm kind of wimpy about it, but I'd give this a nine out of 10. This is so good and it's really easy to make. I have kind of a busy morning, so instead of doing the normal breakfast, I'm doing a quick fix breakfast option, which is that chocolate peanut butter super smoothie. I modified it a little this time. I put less almond milk in and uh, more banana because I like thicker smoothies. Eight and a half out of 10. Again, supposed to be having something else for lunch, but um, just kind of in a bit of a rush today. So I'm doing more leftovers, having that kimchi fried rice. Still a 10 out of 10. I'm obsessed with this. Oh wait, yesterday was a nine, whatever. It's a 10 out of 10 now really won me over. Dinner is lentil masala. Here I have some rice that's like lime cilantro rice. And then the masala part, there's lentils, onions, ginger, garlic, there's like a whole bunch of spices and some green lentils and a bit of cashew cream. It's really good. So much flavor in it. Eight and a half out of 10. Yes, we're doing a day eight bonus because I couldn't do a bunch of the recipes yesterday. So this is the spicy breakfast tacos. Look at these. I'm a chef. These have black beans. They're supposed to have tofu. I messed up and didn't buy enough tofu. So I just did extra black beans and marinated them like you were supposed to do for the tofu. And then this is supposed to be just like a salsa with some avocado, but I decided to make it more of a guac because my avocado was gonna go bad. Eight and a half out of 10. These are fabulous, they're simple. It's beans and guac on a taco. I'm, I'm happy with them. For lunch, I made the nourishing Buddha bowl. Also, I don't know if calling things a Buddha bowl is like appropriation. If it is, I'm sorry. That's just the, what it's called in the book and I don't condone it if that's bad to say. Anyway, in here, it's just supposed to be kind of like a leftover type of bowl. So I put in some leftover lentils. I had some brown rice, uh, asparagus, cucumber, romaine, and then the sauce is a tahini lemon dressing. I feel like I've made something like this a bunch of times before, like tahini sauce, vegetables, a grain, and legumes, but I'll give it a seven out of 10, it's good doing some leftover lentil masala. Still like a nine out of 10, it's so good, I love it. And that was week three of Fiber Fueled. Yes, I did do an extra day. As you saw, I wanted to get in those last couple recipes. Still, there were so many snack recipes this week I didn't get to. There's just so much food to be had each week. I can't keep up. I have so many leftovers still. So I feel like I'm gonna have to take two days before starting week four, just so I don't let all this food go to waste. Overall, doing way better than I was week two, I feel like, I don't know, I turned a corner with it. My skin went back to being really awesome, like how it was in week one. I have some footage here without makeup. There's redness for me is way down. I'm not having pimples. Um, feeling smooth and glowy and clear, which is cool. I feel like my digestion went back to like, it's normal, abnormal place like I wasn't having like super loose stool anymore not having you know bathroom discomfort I feel like bloating not really seeing that at all stomach has been flat like when I finish meals I don't feel stuffed like I'm really eating until I feel full a lot of times I can't finish all that I've made I have stuff for later sometimes I eat it all sometimes I eat a lot of it and they're still left over and then a few hours later I eat more of it I'm just you know following my own hunger signals doing whatever I feel like but I do feel like these meals since they are balanced and well put together like I feel full and satisfied as long as I eat enough of whatever I've made snacks still just having like fruit here and there some nuts or like a spoonful of peanut butter if I'm in the mood I do definitely have have 
more than enough things that it told me to get on the grocery list. It's not completely perfect, like regimented, like you need this exact amount of things and that's all that you buy and everything comes packaged in the exact amount that it says for recipe. Like that's just not how it exists. So it's not perfect in that sense, but it's not like bad. Just letting you know. I was for a few days this week, kind of feeling like excessively thirsty. Like in the evening, I was just like kept drinking more and more water and I was like, why do I still feel thirsty? So that was kind of weird. I don't know. I thought I was like, were the meals saltier on those days? Perhaps like, I don't know, just something that I observed. Um, I did like the recipes a lot more this week. I feel like there was more variety and I don't know, I was just into the flavors. In terms of like new foods I had this week, things I don't usually have, I feel like the only thing was the farro. You know, I did notice um, I had somewhat of a reaction to it, but it wasn't horrible. Um, I feel like the days that I ate it did have a worse headache, um, would kind of have to go to the bathroom a few times shortly after eating it and um, did kind of notice some like eczema flare. Again, I'm still getting some little bumps on my hands. I don't know if you can see on this hand, it's like, usually when I get eczema, it's just like in here and then like this on the other hand, but this hand has been clear. This one has more stuff going on. But again, like pretty mild eczema. I just, I try not to itch it. I like, I, I take a liquid zinc supplement and if I put that on my eczema, it makes the itching go down. Like I just think zinc's anti-inflammatory, yeah. but I'm really surprised that my skin and my face didn't react poorly to the farro. Still, you know, it's a new food. It's not a gluten-free grain, which is, you know, like, oh my God, I had that. And nothing that terrible happened. I feel like if I continue to eat farro, like I have plenty left over to eat, then I can, you know, keep building up my tolerance for it as well. You know, I'm like healing my gut dysbiosis during this. So should it be having reactions to these foods? I'm not allergic to. I didn't want to like address like the weight loss of it all. You know, it does say like on the book cover, like a guide for weight loss. Cause like any whole food plant-based diet, they're like, you'll lose weight cause you're eating whole plant foods and lots of fiber and nutrient density, all that stuff. I mean, I've been eating, you know, pretty much a whole foods plant-based diet for a year and a half pretty consistently. Like, like before that vegan gluten free like i wasn't expecting to like lose a bunch of weight eating this way because i've like been doing whole foods plant-based very consistently first of all i don't have a scale i don't weigh myself throughout my whole like whole foods plant-based diet thing it's like medical medium like i haven't really like changed my clothing sizes at all but i do feel like I've slimmed down somewhat. I can see like, oh, like cellulite was a big thing on my thighs. Don't really notice that very much anymore. There's like a very small amount. Lost maybe some fat, like just kind of overall in my body, just like slimmed down very, very gradually over time and not by like trying to do anything or keeping track of calories in any sense. On this, these four weeks, I haven't measured myself or weighed myself. If I lost weight, I don't know. I mean, my clothes still fit me. My stomach does seem, you know, like, flat that could just have been bloating like I don't know and I'm eating as much as I want to eat and not really keeping track of that I mean I think if weight loss is something you're interested in there's plenty of evidence to support a whole foods plant-based diet will help you to lose weight but that's really not my like intention with this just trying to heal my gut issues the too long didn't read of it all. I don't know if I lost weight during this. I haven't tracked it, but I definitely don't think I've gained weight or increased my size at all. I feel like my headaches overall were less painful this week, except for the days where I had the faro. Like, feel like that was trending downward. You know, I do believe my headaches are related to some gut health issues, but I do also think they're related to anxiety. I've had anxiety issues for many years and I've had headaches for many years, just kind of like a dull constant headache and tense muscles on my neck and my back like always all the time, which I attribute to just being in a constant state of anxiety. You know, we'll see, but also improved gut health could maybe improve my anxiety. We'll see, we'll see what happens down the road. Again, not expecting a full 180 in my chronic health symptoms after, you know, just four weeks of eating differently. But I think, you know, I am doing good stuff. I'm eating such a variety in my diet and do plan to keep doing that. And anyway, yeah, doing week four little nervous about it. There's some more challenging foods in it, but we'll see how it goes. So overall, week three, 
feeling strong, no regrets, in it to win it. If you want to see how weeks one and two went, I have links for both those videos below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it. You can subscribe to my channel. We're putting out new videos every Monday and sometimes Thursday. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about all this going on right here. As always, thank you so much for being here. Goodbye. The end part of the video. The end part of the video, of the video, of the video. Having a lot of anxiety today. Just woke up and my body would, ah! Your heart is racing, your mind, you can't think about anything except terror. He <laughs> practical joke from my body to me.